Aloha everyone. This is the end of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We pick back up on August 12th down at Poiki. This is after fissure 8 has gone into a pause, so there's no more lava coming out of the fissure and feeding into the lava channel making its way down to the coastline. However, there's so much lava inside the channel and particularly the lava delta itself, that 3.5 miles between Kapoho and Poiki, that's still molten and still moving through the channel, feeding these ocean entries that are continuing to encroach upon Poiki, but much more slowly now. At this point in the eruption though, many people are starting to think Poiki is safe from the lava itself, but their eyes are on Fisher 8 to see if it's going to restart. That lava channel became highly compromised in the last eruption as a big old slug of ah uh -uh jammed up the mid lower part of the channel and created a potential backup if another surge of lava was to come through that channel. Right now, there's no indications that Fisher 8 is going to restart. Those collapse explosions that have been occurring up at the summit and Holly Mau Mau have stopped on August 2nd, and they could restart, or maybe they don't. But right now, we still see that little head of lava poking up inside of Fisher 8, and it's keeping everybody kind of on edge still. In mid-August, we realized that Walpoiki might be safe from the lava, as there's no more coming into the system, feeding directly towards it. It's not going to be safe from the sand and all this sediment that's getting washed into the, the bay and has now blocked off the boat ramp entirely. All this coarse sand and small rocks is being pushed in by the predominant tides which drag everything from the north to the south. At this point the monitoring is still holding steady but it's starting to become a little bit more intermittent as the activity shows no sign of restarting and we're now having another concern, a category five hurricane that's projected to make landfall on the island of Hawaii, beginning with the Puna district where the eruption is ongoing. The hurricane ends up missing to the south and all we get in Puna is a bunch of rainfall. But all of that rain creates wide out conditions and there's about four days from the 21st through the 25th where we have no footage of Fisher 8. Now here I'm going to take a little bit of time to tell a little story about the end of the eruption and a camera that Harry Durgan, a citizen scientist, installed at the Y of Poiki Road and Highway 132. So this camera was put up to reassure the public that Fisher 8 wasn't erupting. However, at night it started to pick up a strange glow in it and this didn't really correspond with the fissure itself. I thought it was some kind of light pollution. But anyways, they went down to investigate. Harry Durgan took Philip Ong and John Stallman down there and through a long exposure, even though they couldn't see it with the naked eye, they could see glow coming from Fisher 8. It wasn't strong enough to be seen from the cell phone web camera, but there was a glow. It wasn't the glow we were seeing. They just happened to stumble upon it. And the next morning we did see that despite what we thought previously, Fisher 8 had lava in it again at the surface. On the morning of September 1st, the USGS goes up on their morning overflight and we see in fact that there is lava inside that recess pit within Fisher 8 itself. It ha the lava hasn't come out of the cinder cone, but it's there and it's visible. This is enough to restart the clock on declaring the eruption over. There, traditionally, the USGS would use a three month metric where there's no lava at the surface for three months in order to declare an eruption over. This little bit of lava restarts that clock, which might not seem like a big deal now, but at the time there were emergency declarations at the county level that were based upon the eruption being ongoing. This pushed back those declarations even further and prolonged the state of emergency. Over the next couple days, Fisher 8 continues to have slight activity and has filled in the inner part of the cinder cone, but hasn't been able to make its way into the lava channel or even past the mouth of the cinder cone itself. And that would be the last of Fisher 8 we hear in this eruption. Meanwhile, back down at Boiki, the story's just getting going though. That sand that had been inundating the area beginning to wash in following the eruption has now completely filled in first and second bay. Over the first six months after the eruption ends, tons and tons of this sediment ends up completely closing off the boat ramp, the only boat ramp in Puna, and also pushing all the way through First Bay into Second Bay, and then 
proceeding to wrap around Second Bay and go down the coast even further into Third Bay. It's a tremendous amount of sand there. And that's one of the issues that we look towards when we start talking about recovery. We need our boat ramp back. We need a boat ramp in Puna. And right now the plan is to dredge out all that sand. That plan is in the beginning stages of development, but the idea is to remove all the sand from First Bay to reinvigorate that area. We also have plans four years after the eruption to redo some of the roadways that were lost that haven't been redone yet. This includes Poiki Road and the Red Road, uh, Highway 137. Now these projects are all about a year or two away. So hopefully in the next couple years, many of these prized areas have been restored and many of the people can get back to the lives that they once knew. Mahalo everyone for sticking with me through this series. I know it's taken a year to get all of the different episodes released. I will now try and um, edit this all together into a movie length feature. No idea how long that'll take and no promises on that delivery date. But that is the plan. I appreciate everybody for watching. And here's to a continued recovery from the 2018 eruption. Until next time, aloha.